All right, you guys are so awesome. You guys always ask great questions. And somebody actually just recently asked me, can I do a whole video on plants for turtles? So that's what this is. Today we're gonna to talk about plants for turtles, which ones are my favorite, what I recommend, and maybe what to stay away from. All right, so some of my favorite plants for turtles are ones to kind of surround and decorate the habitat with. I like things that are both visually pleasing for myself, if I'm gonna be hanging out with it, and also that provide cover, provide shelter, and provide shade uh, for all my turtles and tortoises. And then a big thing is you want stuff that's not toxic. So anytime you add any plant to your setups, whether it's an aquarium or something outdoors, always do your research. Run a quick Google search. What is toxic? Is it toxic to animals? Is it toxic to people? You always wanna know. Is it toxic? Lesson for life. <laughs> I've got these banana trees back here. The reason I have these, and I talked about this in a previous video, was uh, I like the, what they provide for the tree frogs. Well, they also provide a nice bit of afternoon shade because uh, during the day, the sun comes down through here pretty harsh and it gives a nice little bit of shade to the rest of the pond. Meanwhile, the rest of the sun can kind of taper over here at this end. And then this way, they're not getting beat down with a lot of hot sun during the summertime. So additionally around the pond, I've added these grasses. Um, I love the look of grasses around ponds, around tortoise pens. Um, and then the turtles love them. They love to like get underneath these. They'll, they'll kind of crawl underneath them and hang out underneath there. It's sort of a little tiny shelter, but they will use it. And the other thing that's really nice about grasses and you know small shrubs is the turtles and tortoises love to nest near them. I'm not sure what that's about, but the nine times out of 10, especially in this setup, they will nest at the base of one of these plants. Also, one of the added benefits is I love like having some flowers around, a little pop of color here and there. Um, just It goes a long way and it just gives it so much more character. Um, at certain times of the year, several of these plants will all flower at the same time. I think earlier this spring they were all going off and um, this guy, what I don't even really know what this is, but um, is flowering. Uh, the, the nice thing is the rest of this in here, like, you know, some of this is just you know, like yard grass. And I just planted some of that in there to kind of hold the soil together uh, during the winter and to also provide a little bit of cover. The box turtles like to really root around in those grasses. And then if you look on the other side of the pond, I've got my elephant ears. And again, same function as the bananas. Uh, they provide a lot of cover. They provide homes for tree frogs and other things that come and visit the pond. But at the same time, the leaves are edible, and if you look at the leaves on the bottom of my elephant ear, when they drip down low near the water, the cooters can come up and get a bite of them, and they just love them. They're delicious. Here at the Alligator Snapping Turtle Pond, um, like I said in the video when I was building this, I wanted a pond just full of plants. I can't really have that with the cooters. The cooters will just eat all of this and there will be nothing left. Um, with the alligator snapping turtles, they don't really eat a lot of vegetation until the fall before they go you know, dormant for winter. Uh, so I've got a mix in here. I've got floating duckweed, uh, salvinia. I've got, uh, I don't know if duckweed and salvinia are the same thing, but there's two types of duckweed, one with the larger leaf and then one with a smaller waxier leaf. I've also got uh, Amazon frogbit, uh, parrot's feather is also in here. That's kind of the longer one that, you know, climbs up. Got some papyrus in this container here, along with, uh, I believe these are called green arrow. Uh, I've heard them called a couple different names, but um, just kind of surrounded it with, with as many plants as I could. Again, everything in here is non-toxic. Now, some of them, like the parrot's feather, is a non-native and it can be invasive. That's the reason I actually have it, is I pulled it out of native you know, habitats and put it here just to create some cover. So that's another thing is know your local laws. You may not be able to have certain plants because they can be invasive where you live. So many of these aquatic plants are actually really easy to grow. All you need is some tubs, like what I have. I actually have several tubs. Some of these have turtles in them, but some of them are strictly grow out tubs. And you can grow these plants on your own to feed to your turtles, to add to your setups. So for example, if you were talking about water hyacinth or water lettuce, once you get it going and you have some tubs, you can add it to those tubs, get it growing, and then always have a constant supply of it.
So here in the Mexican giant musk tub, I'm growing out water hyacinth. I'm also growing out a little bit of parrot's feather and Amazon frog bit. And as you can see, this stuff really just starts to take off. And inside here, you've got, uh, you know, tiny little froglets, um, all kinds of things just living in here. Um, Amazon frog bit, it's about, looks like that. So it's almost like a giant form of a duckweed crossed a little bit with a water hyacinth. And you can see the little roots with these floating aquatic plants, the roots that they have actually filter the water. Let's take a look at those. If you can see those roots, they almost, they almost look a little bit like gills or something. They're, they're really, really interesting. But the good thing about that is, is you add these aquatic plants to your habitats and they're gonna filter out those nitrates. They're gonna clean the water. They're also gonna soften the water. So it gives everything a nice soft pH. And um, if you want them to grow, just snap off a few leaves. And for the plant to regenerate those leaves, uh, it has to absorb more nitrates, thus cleaning your water. So now let's take these leaves and we'll bring them over to the cooters who are really gonna appreciate these leaves. Hold on, four wheeler. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't know what's up with my neighborhood. So we've got our wire, water hyacinth leaves right here and we're gonna give these to the cooters. These guys love these. So that's the trick, is creating something that you can kind of create almost a cycle. So what I've worked on is trying to get my plants growing to where there's a cycle that I'm growing out stuff that not only helps my water and filters my water, but is also providing food for all my animals. We'll do the same thing again. So here in the alligator snapping turtle pond, I have a huge excess amount of Amazon frog bit and duckweed. And it just so happens, cooters love to eat that. So I'm gonna get, get a nice, get a nice size handful. Grab some of this up, some of this, some of this. And you can see there's even places where it, with the water level fluctuating from rain, it's kind of everywhere. So as much as I can stand to hold, nice big handful. Come over here to the other pond. There you go, guys. And they're just gonna be so happy to eat that. And so, I'm providing them basically stuff that I farmed for them to eat. And that's like one of my favorite things is being able to grow my own food. The other uh, additional benefit is in those plants, I'm going to have tiny little organisms, tiny little crustaceans, tiny arthropods. And I can put those plants in with musk turtles, for example, and they're going to feed on those things. There's tiny snails in these plants and my musk turtles love snails. So now I'm throwing those plants in with the musk turtles and they're able to pick the snails out of the plants just like they would in the wild. All right, now I am not a botanist. I'm very far from it, but I can recommend a few aquatic plants. They're a few of my all-time favorites and they're easy to find. So you want duckweed, uh, look up another one called salvinia, water lettuce, water hyacinth, Amazon frog bit, parrot's feather, and I think that's all of them. <laughs> An easy place to check is Home Depot, Lowe's, pond stores, and aquarium stores should all stock water plants. The main thing to remember is be responsible with them and don't let them get into a wild habitat because they can be invasive. All right, so here for this group of Gulf Coast box turtles, uh, one of the plants that I love about this enclosure is this yucca plant. I just like the look of it. Um, I always call it like a redneck palm tree, but it just kind of comes up, overhangs their little pond area a little bit. And then the other plants in here are just kind of some natives. I mean, this is some kind of hardwood. I'm not a plant guy. And then uh, just some little bits of grasses and shrubs. And it just works perfectly. These guys have plenty of little plants to get underneath and they're really happy. This little plant right here I came from a buddy, but I also know it is sold in some aquarium stores and it is called Salvinia. And it's basically like a larger leaf duckweed and it's got like a little fuzzy side on top of it. And you can put this in any habitat and it'll spread really quickly. Again, it's another one of those plants that the cooters love. So I grow it out in one of the tubs and I feed it to the cooters uh, whenever it starts to really take over. But Salvinia, it's very similar to a duckweed, floats on top, filters the water, Another great plant.
Uh, the Amazon Frog Bit is a new one that I got this year from my buddy Jared. And it's one of my favorites. And again, here in the Alligator Snapping Turtle Pond, I actually have a whole lot of Amazon Frog Bit. Uh, right now, it's all spread out in little tiny clumps. But what makes this such a good plant is the fact that not only is it a floating plant similar to a duckweed or a salvinia, it has a little bit more structure to it and it's a little bit thicker and it can actually get pretty large. And so what I like about that is when I do want to grow it out to feed it to the cooters, it's a much more robust plant. Uh, it's much more um, fibrous for them. And so it ends up being a much better meal. And I just really like that Amazon frog bit. I think I'm, I think I'm hooked on it, man. It's really, really good. And again, the parrot's feather is another favorite. Um, this one grows in these really long strands. So these, these strands grow really, really long, and once you get them planted, they're gonna run almost the entire length of your pond. So um, it's good, I like it. Uh, it helps clean the water, just like all the other plants, but it can be a bit, uh, a bit much. So you do need to kind of constantly trim it. You do need to keep an eye on it because parrot's feather can rapidly spread and you may not actually see what's underwater spreading and you'll only see what's on top you know kind of sticking up so parrot's feather great plant beautiful highly invasive and can overtake your pond pretty quickly i would definitely say the best beginner ones for a pond or aquatic habitat would probably be water hyacinth and water lettuce uh, simply because they're big enough that you can keep an eye on them and they're not going to get out of hand um, they do die off in the winter. Uh, water hyacinth, water lettuce, uh, they don't come back. So in the winter when it gets cold and it freezes, they're dead, they're done. I do manage every year, I would say, maybe one or two plants. I can actually get to overwinter through the garage. They'll kind of shrink down and become little tiny miniature versions of the mature plant. But I have been able to kind of get them through the winter in a garage in a tub with a, you know, a daylight spectrum bulb. Uh, but the Amazon frog bit, the duckweed, and the salvinia will actually make it through the winter. They'll die off a little bit, but it will come back. Um, so duckweed is another one that can take over really quickly, and you just have basically green carpet over your pond. Um, so you may, you know, periodically have to go and clean out that duckweed and, you know, move it to another setup or feed it off to a turtle. But it is one that can take over pretty quickly. So I would guess I would say the overall, the main thing with aquatic plants is they are 100% a good thing. They add so much more dimensions to your setups. Uh, your turtles are gonna be so much happier having some aquatic plants or feeding on aquatic plants. Uh, to me, they're a win-win. Uh, there is a little bit more management involved. You do have to keep, for example, uh, with water hyacinth, water lettuce, uh, Amazon frogbit, the ones that have the longer kind of tendrils coming down to absorb nutrients from the water those can get sucked up in a pump or filter. So make sure that your pumps or filters have like a pre-filter or a cover so that they don't suck those plants down in there and kind of get jammed up. But overall, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i so much happier when I have you know tons of aquatic plants. Every year I'm in a scramble in the spring to try and get more water hyacinth, get more water lettuce, get you know all this stuff because I just love the look of it. Uh, the turtles are so much happier. Um, have I mentioned the turtles are happier? I say that like all the time. So anyway, yeah, hope that makes sense. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. I've wanted to cover plants for a really long time. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm far from a plant expert. Feel free to browse online, ask more questions. Uh, like I said, look at Home Depot, look at Lowe's, look at plant stores, look at aquarium stores, pond stores. Um, there's gonna be lots of plants out there and there's a lot of people out there that are really smart in the subject, smarter than me. And uh, please like, comment, and uh, share this video. I appreciate all you guys, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Take care.